Okay, with this engine build, I've run into a little bit of a situation. The deck surface of the engine block has been milled 40 thousandths, and I've also taken 30 thousandths off the cylinder head tops. Um, effectively lowering those cylinder heads down towards the crankshaft 70 thousandths of an inch. So in doing that, that's more than your average cleanup job. This was actually done intentionally to bring the compression ratio up. Um, what effectively it does is completely screw up the intake manifold angles. Now I did expect to deal with the intake manifold not bolting up appropriately. We have to actually have the, the uh, intake manifold machined down to uh, remove some material to actually physically drop it down closer to the block so that way all these ports match up and all the bolt holes line up. Chrysler uses a valley pan and the problem is this top rail is actually not machined. This is the factory height on it. Um, you can see right here there's a little bit of a lip that drops down because we took so much material off the head surface and the uh, the block surface. So when you put the gasket on here we actually have an alignment issue with the ports. You can see there's a pretty good lip here and it doesn't line up right at the top. Also the bolt holes are completely off. So I've done some research online. There's really good, no good way to effectively use this pan gasket. Um, my personal thought would be to machine this gasket surface down here, which would drop that down to that level, bring it back down to the to the cylinder heads and the intake um, ports appropriately. But I think if I did that, I would have to move a considerable amount of material on this surface, and that's just not something that's really a plausible situation. So I've done some research online. I did find out that they uh, do offer some options as far as a new valley pan as a one piece assembly. My problem with that is it doesn't match up the iron heads. They've got these notches here which really kind of sucks. There's really no good way to get a valley pan in there. Hughes Engines does make a a valley pan cover which is like a flat piece of sheet metal. It's made out of stainless. Looks like a pretty nice piece but on the flip side of it I'm cheap, he wants 60 bucks for it. I'm thinking I could just build this myself. What I'm thinking about doing, and I'll show you in, down the road, we're gonna try, I guess, try this out and see what happens, is I'm gonna try to cut this valley pan down, use the original center section out of it. And what I wanna do is basically copy their design a little bit by cutting off this extra material high enough to cover these ports or those slots. Cut that material off as a straight line. Uh, I have access to a sheet metal brake so what I think I'm going to try to do is try and get this line and bend this tab down the other direction much like their pan. So what will happen is this this lip here will be then down towards this angle underneath the head and what I can do is then seal it up on those sections where it's 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 down and it'll meet it'll meet it up real nice um, but in this section where these are wide open I'll have material I'll bend the tab up to actually kind of custom fit it into each one of these slots that way I can have some material there that I can silicone and seal that off and then also use Hughes gaskets for the intake which actually cover those slots um, I think it'll be a little bit more robust than their plate. Uh, I was kind of looking at their design and kind of wish they had maybe a trim to fit tab that would fit these and you can cut them down and just give you some more material because uh, effectively what they're doing is relying on the gasket to actually block that port off with your sheet metal right here. So um, you're using a gasket but then you're also putting silicone between the metal here and then you're putting silicone between the metal and the fiber gasket which is a little bit of a weak point if you ask me. So if I brought some sheet metal right up close to there and, and silicone it and put the back gasket on I think there would be a, a way better uh, solution to seal up this valley pan. Okay so what I'm going to do is I drew, drew a straight line, a uh, straight edge line on the old gaskets here that I had attached to it and uh, this line right here 
I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut all this extra material off. And what I'm going to do is then bend this all down, but I'm going to slice these tabs, each one, and those are going to be for those missing slots. So we'll try this out. If it doesn't work, we'll just get another gasket and go a different route, but figured we'll try something custom. Okay, I've got both heads on, and I'm, what I'm going to do is just going to mark these cylinder heads where each one of these notches are. Um, I do see one little issue with that, is that they're not perfectly square. So this particular one's got an angle to it. I'm also thinking that since the heads aren't completely done and washed and cleaned yet, that I would probably uh, try and square them up. So what I'm going to do is get my straight edge and roughly square to the bottom of the block or the head surface here and scribe each line and scribe each line going vertically just so I have a reference point for my gasket when I lay it on there These will be a rough guesstimate and I'll just trim the, as I put the valley pan in for the final time, I will just trim it to fit. And hopefully we don't have any oil leaks. Because Hughes is offering a composite uh, fiber gasket that has some silicone port seal or seals on the ports. So... We'll use their gasket, it's about 15 bucks. Like I said, their valley pan kit was about $60 plus shipping. Wasn't really thinking that it was too difficult to hand make. And I figured I'll try it first with this pan. Since it's already has it already has the shape roughed out. The other thing that they did say was the intake I plan on running on this engine will actually have a clearance issue with the heat crossover. So their flat piece of metal that they sell you to fit this or to do this particular setup actually requires you to machine the bottom of the intake manifold because it won't fit. So I figured, well, it's a crapshoot. Either way, I do it. And I might as well try and do it myself first. It's a learning experience. Plus, if this works out, it'll look factory. And no one will really know the difference. So I'm going to bolt this down. Just kind of finger tight with the factory rails or support brackets or whatever you want to call these things. I'm going to snug it down and grab my marker. And what I'm going to do, I'll zoom in here. is right at this corner you'll see where this pan is you see this line right here that's the that's the top of the block this this tip right here um, going down is the block surface so you can see how much the head is actually dropped down it's a well if you look from the front it's a good 
uh, I don't know, a quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is just mark this pan right here where that deck starts to go down. I'm going to mark it on the front and on the back. in all four corners. So I've got it marked on all four corners back there and right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as a reference to put this gasket into a sheet metal brake and try to take this tab right here now and bend it down the other way and tuck it underneath those those ports slice those individual pieces back up and allow them to come up and kind of just fill in that void and when I've laid the gasket on top of it at least I have a backer I can fill it with silicone and it have something fairly solid and rigid behind it instead of just solely relying on the gasket I did also find I had another issue with the cylinder head and in my efforts to keep the originality of the the numbers that are stamped on the pad for this engine um, I had them stop that machining surface right before the numbers well I kinda had thought that there was nothing in the way but you could see here that the actual head does sit on the un, un, unmachined surface so what I have to do now is flip the head over and just kind of grind that pad off. Nothing critical, there's no gasket sealing surface, it's just physically in the way. So I'm going to take my die grinder and uh, grind that out about a half inch back, put a step in the bottom side of that head to just clear that, clear that notch. Once it's painted, no one's going to see it. And like I said, it doesn't really affect anything as far as gasket surface goes. Took it to work. And what I did was I put it in the sheet metal break where I cut those or make those little notches earlier. Um, gave me an alignment for the front and on the rear. I marked it with a marker, but I cut it with shears before I took it to work. So it gave me a perfect line. If you look down it, it's pretty straight. So nice heavy break at work did the trick. So how this is going to get installed is when... Uh, let me back up. This will get installed before the cylinder heads get put in place. So the downfall of this setup is that it can only go on with one of the cylinder heads off. Um, you can get it in here with one cylinder head mounted, tuck it in underneath there, and it fits pretty good. Now what I did is I had to trim this down just to fit inside that rail. So I trimmed it to fit really nice and snug. So like I said, the downfall about this is one cylinder head has to be off in order for this to be installed. Uh, going forward, if we ever had to take this off in the car, you could then sacrifice this and bend it all to hell and get it out of there if need be and go with uh, the Hughes two-piece design and then have to put it in together. But um, for this, I really don't see any real need to take the cylinder heads off again at least as far as I own the car or until I'm not happy with how this performs. So we're going to do it this way and see how it goes. Now I did tell you about those ports or those notches that don't have any coverage. Now this particular setup is very similar to their their pan design. Their pan design does come up just like this and it comes underneath the cylinder head. And what they want you to do is when you um, install it, you just put a bead of silicone down on each one of these, put their gasket on here on the top of the head, and then run a complete bead of silicone down that gasket. And what that does is essentially seals the gasket to the pan, and when you put the intake on, that holds that gasket in place. Now, I'm not exactly sure how structurally the intake will cover these ports. Um, I'll find that out once I get the intake manifold, but in the meantime what I'm going to do is I did scribe those earlier and I did slice those particular sections and I'm going to bend these tabs up. So what I'm going to do is install it, scribe a line right on the cylinder head edge and cut those tabs right up, bend those straight up so basically they're going to fill in those holes. So when I put this down, 
I get the cylinder heads on, I mount it, I'll be able to silicone around each tab on these ports and then put the gasket on and run a bead of silicone down. I really don't think that this will leak at all. Um, even if this engine does have a little bit of blow-by, um, I think it will be a very strong seal. The fact that the pan is one piece still, and then the other slick part about it is that it's not going to look any different than the factory. Uh, we're going to keep that factory look, and no one should know the difference. So I have the valley pan here. It's ready to go. You can see I bent up the tabs, and this will slide right in on those cylinder heads. And what I'll be able to do is get silicone down underneath the head on each one and then also backfill each one of these tabs so it'll have a nice good bonding surface to the tabs and try and keep um, most of that you know engine pressure off of that gasket as being the only source of uh, retention from uh, blowing out so we should be in good shape we'll get it siliconed up and put it in